Hey everyone, the name is Rector and in today's video we're talking four INTP subtypes. So now I've found that there are four unique variations within the INTP personality type, all sharing the same cognitive functions and the same values, but a different priority in which ones they find to be better than the others. So these four subtypes are the following. First, the hacker. Second, the scientist. Third, the rebel. And fourth, the philosopher. So the initial assumption of the MTI is that all INTPs are scientists. This couldn't be further from the truth. This depends on personal choice and personal level of development and what you've come to value higher in your life. And not all INTPs will value scientific accuracy over everything else. Some INTPs will come to value efficiency over accuracy. Some INTPs will come to value diversity over accuracy or science. And some INTPs will come to value existential awareness over, for example, accuracy or, for that matter, diversity. So what that means is the INTP is torn between internally whether they should focus on the theoretical bigger picture or the chance of new options and new possibilities or the chance of tactically smart or superior alternatives in the situation or scientifically accurate and proven and critically developed logical principles. So the choice here is which one do I place higher in myself? Which one means more to me? Which one matters more on a personal level? And this is just up to you. This is just personal nuance and a matter of personal choice. These choices are made because while to an extent all these traits go together, for the most part we can pursue awareness and science hand in hand. For the most part, we can pursue awareness and diversity hand in hand. For the most part, we can pursue awareness and tactical efficiency all together. So the smart or the wise choice is usually the efficient and effective choice. The diverse and the open and the nuanced thought process is beneficial to the accurate and scientific and principled and sharp process of introverted thinking. So the problem is it's almost always going to go hand in hand, but not always. So what you can have to remember when you're deciding on your subtype is what have I picked primarily in previous situations throughout my life? What do I pick if I have to put one above the other? What is technically more important to me? And what this says about you is, am I more ruled by the desire for peace of mind or for the pursuit of satisfaction or for the pursuit of pride or for the pursuit of some kind of joy or happiness? So the philosopher subtype of the INTP primarily values that pursuit of uh, you could say peace of mind. What that means is they are searching for a level of uh, awareness and understanding. And they believe that true awareness, true higher seeing, through a higher level of intuitive thought, I will be able to gain peace of mind, clarity and stability. Introverted intuition is seen as the rep recipe against anxiety as well as the recipe for energy and for a level of fascination. So this is an INTP that is very fascinated by the world around them. They are full of questions and full of ponderings. So they're wondering why is the world this way? What makes it work that way? Where does it all come from? How does it all come to go together? And I said this is not completely comprehensive with introverted thinking and science. What I mean with this is philosophical thought is often impossible to prove. The insight that you gain from introverted intuition is only to an extent verifiable through science, but to some extent it is not. 
to some extent we don't know how to prove it we don't know how to back it up we don't know what logical principles might make it add up mathematically we know it can make sense or feel intuitively like the right thing but we might lack the ability to prove it so the introverted intuitive subtype of the INTP is torn between this uh, and it decides that the pursuit of awareness and of philosophy is higher in importance than the pursuit of proof and evidence and scientific clarity. So what this means is they have an almost irrational desire to learn and to understand and to comprehend and to explain irrational in the sense that some of it cannot be explained, some of it cannot be understood, some of it cannot be proven. The other INTP subtype that is worth mentioning here is the hacker. And I say the hacker is the person that tries to apply thinking in the world around them. What that means is they're trying to invent solutions, solve problems, come up with more efficient ways to do things, and come up with tactical ad edges and advantages in each situation. So the INTP can either be searching for philosophical awareness or for the ability to understand and comprehend the rules of each room and of each environment and of each tool and how to use them to their advantage. So the primary importance of the INTP hacker is, is this efficient? Is this smart? Is this tactical? Is this the right move? What is the right move? How does this work? How can I use this room to my advantage? So the INTP thinking perceiving subtype searches for this edge in every situation. The smart choice, the most cheap product to buy, the best argument to win the discussion. So there comes a point where you realize that what is tactical is not always what is scientific. Sometimes it is the tactical choice to pretend to be stupid. Sometimes it's the tactically intelligent choice to do whatever gives you the best results in a specific situation. So the hacker recognizes that the room might work in an irrational or stupid manner, but it might still know how to exploit this group or this environment to its advantage. So what it does is it looks at the world rather pragmatically. What is rewarded, what, does, what gives the best result, what gives the best advantage, and then choosing based on that the INTP hacker subtype finds the best course of action. Now while talking about all this, it's important to think about intuitive perceiving. Yeah, the INTP is an intuitive and perceiving subtype. That means their mind works on multiple levels at the same time. They see multiple options, multiple alternatives. So the question is always which alternative is better, which alternative is more tactical. To the hacker, it's options only serve the purpose of boosting adaptability and helping you find the right choice. But the INTP rebel archetype searches for intuitive and perceiving options and alternatives purely for the joy of having these alternatives, purely for the satisfaction of figuring it out and figuring out what's going to happen. So the INTP NP subtype is always looking at what's going to happen next, how is this going to go, what's gonna come, how is this going to play out, what will this lead to and what will that lead to in turn. So the INTP NP sees options and searches for options, constantly searches for options and evaluates options and re-evaluates options, looking at different options analytically, what is smarter, what is better, what is faster, what is the smoothest way to get to some point from point A to point B. This idea can be summed up by the need for diversity or for variation. And INTPs have a great need for variation, and especially the rebels. They are rebels because they, their need for variation comes at the tendency to resist any form of control or discipline from others. The NP subtype is almost opposite of the scientist subtype. The scientist subtype can accept 
scientific rules and criteria and control and discipline for the sake of science, for the sake of purity in the search of answers and of truth. But the NP has an ability to compromise their need for science and for truth and for clarity and answers for the sake of this diversity and variation. Just for the sake of having a choice. The INTP NP subtype values choice above anything else and that means being able to resist what is that what they know is correct, what they know is smart for the sake of what seems fun and interesting and what could be lead somewhere and what could become really cool and what could end up getting them where they need to be. What you could do to understand the subtypes is you could create this Maslowian hierarchy and what you could say is each of these represent different things. The introverted thinking subtype, the IT, is this most frequently discussed subtype of the INTP in the Myers-Briggs lore. But there are more. And this is perhaps why some of you haven't really felt like INTPs. Perhaps you felt that your philosophical need and your thoughtfulness is sometimes a little bit a little bit far-fetched, a little bit too out there to be to make you a good thinking type. And perhaps that's made you think maybe I'm an INFJ. Perhaps your high need for variation has made you think maybe I'm an extroverted intuitive. Because I need so much change in my life, because I tend to resist control, because it's important for me not to be pegged down. Or perhaps that thinking and perceiving need for efficiency and edge has made you think that maybe I'm not an introverted intuitive. Because uh, I can be very good at using in the environment to my advantage. The subtypes are a way to look beyond the personality type uh, to also look at prioritization. Of course you're still an INTP, as long as you would always pick philosophy over extroverted sensing. As long as you would always pick introverted thinking over pure passion and extroverted feeling. As, of course you're an INTP if you would always pick diversity and variation over control if you could. And of course you're a thinking and perceiving type if you could always choose what is the most tactically efficient over what is uh, the nicest or the most fair thing to do for others. The subtypes are determined rather by personal choice and preference and that can change from situation to situation. What that means is you might recognize your subtype switching depending on on which moment you're in and which environment you're in. What you might also notice is certain environments might ask certain things of you. Perhaps you'll find that in certain situations you need more thinking and in other situations intuition can flow more, flow more freely. So what I've noticed is these things tend to change in me from week to week. So I tend to go through a phase as an INFJ, through introverted intuition, through introverted feeling, through feeling judging, through intuitive judging, through introverted intuition and then through introverted feeling again. What I noticed is this depends on my changes in mood and my level of uh, personal pressure and my personal concerns at that time. I told you this have to do with emotions and what I've also said is that thinking perceiving types search the pride of being right and of winning discussion over any positive emotion any other positive emotion. The introverted intuitive searches for the peace of mind giving by understanding intuitively how the world works and where you are and what world this is. The intuitive and perceiving type searches for satisfaction in knowing they have always made the right choice and that they have picked the best option out of all available options. And finally, the introverted and thinking uh, subtype 
searches for joy in the sense of uh, the joy of knowing I'm right and that uh, the people around me are wrong. The joy of knowing that I've figured it out, that I've got it, that I've understood it, and that I've mastered something on a mechanical level. So the question perhaps becomes, are you more ruled by the need for peace, like the INTP philosopher, or are you more ruled by the need for satisfaction, like the INTP rebel, or are you more ruled by the need of pride, like the INTP hacker, or are you more ruled by the need for joy, like the INTP scientist? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching, and do feel free to tell me what you think about these subtypes theories, and how you would do it, and how you see the INTP's subtypes. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.